Hello. I would like to discuss MIDI synchronization between software and hardware. What I have found is sometimes the synchronization between the two tempos is not always locked in. And when that tempo slips, we can have drift in the rate at some point, and then it kind of doesn't ever catch back up. Ableton wound up creating a really great solution called Ableton Link, which corrects for this so that every measure it winds up, I believe it's every measure, every measure it winds up getting a reset um, to the clock. So it sends out new clock information and any Ableton Link devices, it'll wind up counting beats and it'll make sure. So if you're on 4-4, it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 on the server that's on the producer of the Ableton Link uh, information, and then any receiver on that Ableton Link information will wait till it gets back to one to start. Um, it can be really helpful, and it's actually really great, and works really well for that case. One of the things I'm not 100% certain on is whether or not that MIDI data is actually time aligned. and one of the things I did find out was that RTP MIDI went up time aligning that MIDI data. So before it went, any RTP MIDI clients wind up producing MIDI data, they're making sure they have time aligned data that they're outputting, which is awesome. So what I'm, the way I'm introducing that into this scenario is with the Blocus Pi Sound which is producing MIDI and going directly into the Octatrack. So the way this looks is if I hit play here, play on the electron starts, I restart because I wasn't, that wasn't hundred percent restarted. So every time I hit restart, it's going and that's great. So the way that is set up is I have an output device called Darlene, um, which is a MIDI output device and it's enabled and it's setting a MIDI sync. That MIDI sync is then read by the Pi sound over the network, over my local network, and produces a MIDI output. That's the basics of this setup. It works really well. So the way I wound up doing that is I purchased the Pi sound. Pi sound is what's called a hat for a Raspberry Pi. A hat is essentially a device that you place on top of a Raspberry Pi, and then you get more inputs and outputs or whatever kind of uh, computational device you want to connect to the Raspberry Pi. This one just has a MIDI in, a MIDI out, audio in, and audio out. It was a Kickstarter, a very successful Kickstarter, and it's a really great device. The actual audio outputs on there are quarter-inch stereo, and they are DC coupled and uh, I believe AC coupled on the input. So you could actually hook it up to modular gear if you wanted. Um, I have not tried that yet because I'm mainly using this as a MIDI device. The interesting thing is that MIDI device is not a USB MIDI device. It is uh, through the GPIO connection on the Raspberry Pi. So that Raspberry Pi um, is essentially utilizing MIDI in a serial connection and not a USB connection, which is when you hear about people using Atari's and Cubase in like the late eighties, early nineties and saying it was like the perfect sync. And when you hear people talk about, um, sound cards that they had, um, that had serial connections on the back of them for MIDI, uh, those were a lot of times remembered very fondly as some of the best sync they've ever had. To me, this harkens back to when I had uh, Pro Audio Spectrum 16 connected to a 486 uh, computer, and I was using a tracker, um, and then eventually wound up getting into Cubase. And that first version of Cubase I had was Cubase 3.5 Revision 2, which was the introduction of VST technology. It was really great. Um, the connection that I had was to a, I believe, an MC-303. And that MC-303 would connect to Cubase over the serial connection in my audio card. And 
it was perfect sync. I could hit record in Cubase and it would record everything that was on my MC303 pretty perfectly. I might have to shift it a couple of milliseconds um, in order to get it directly on the drown downbeat, um, but it wasn't significant. And if it was significant, I would just move it and it would stay in sync for the remainder of the song. So I could record an entire version of the MC303 and never have to worry about, or entire performance, and never have to worry about time aligning anything other than that first downbeat. And that's what I'm talking about. So what I discovered then was once I moved over to USB MIDI, that wasn't the same case. Uh, and I got my first USB MIDI device that had four in, four out, and it was great to have multiple MIDI devices because I just gotten a micro Q, a Waldorf micro Q, and I had picked up a Oberheim Matrix 1000. And what started happening is I stopped utilizing Cubase um, and started focusing more on sequencing via the MC303. Eventually, I kind of got away from hardware, got into software, and I've always kind of had this balancing act of what worked best and how to record best. However, this, with any kind of software, is now working perfectly. Let me just play for an example what that sounds like. So if I hit play on here, right, we're seeing the play go on there. So if I hit metronome on, just give me one second. All right, so if I hit metronome on there, we can hear the metronome now. And if I turn the metronome on the Octatrack, pretty dead on. And that's pretty much been the same since I set this clock offset. The clock offset is going to be any kind of latency that we're getting. But now I can have this going and it's just, Freaking works. Uh, let me turn that off because that's kind of annoying. Stop it and stop it and turn off the metronome there. Turn off the metronome here. Cool. So, why is that better? The reason that's better is because the time alignment. So, the RTP MIDI like uh, protocol lines up. I believe it's a protocol, um, winds up having, uh, for each MIDI, MIDI uh, event, it winds up having a time alignment for that MIDI event. So in case anything kind of slips or goes any direction, it will, by the time it hits there, it will reconstitute it properly. So think of like when you're watching uh, Netflix, um, that is that and it doesn't ever really go out of sync because the audio is time aligned so because there is some kind of time based data that is saying this audio gets played when this video gets played with just regular midi we do not have that um, there's no real time alignment what happens is pulses go out and they go out at whatever rate the sequencer is designed to produce pulses at. Typically, that is 24 pulses per quarter note. That means for every quarter note, we uh, wind up getting 24 of these individual pulses. When those get out of time, um, they can slow down or create uh, jitter, in MIDI jitter, uh, on the target device that we're trying to synchronize to from the software in this example that jitter is kind of native to hardware um, and has been for some time now but you'll notice or at least i notice when i'm working primarily with hardware that doesn't really come into play that much um, if i'm just focused on hardware hardware se sequencers i have this hardware sequencer and multiple hardware sequencers connected it doesn't I don't ever notice it. I don't ever notice it changing. So that jitter may be present there, but it's not noticeable to me. And I can sit down for hours on end uh, working on, you know, a couple of loops or, you know, a sequence or whatever I'm working on. And I, I just don't notice any shift or any kind of change. 
but I always seem to notice it with software prior to utilizing PySound, um, prior to utilizing really RTP MIDI specifically. The PySound costs $100 and the Raspberry Pi costs, uh, you know, around $40, I believe. The enclosure there costs, I think, around $20. Um, for me, I just I already had a Raspberry Pi lying around that I was not using actively. So it's a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigabytes of RAM on it. And I just slapped on the hat and, and put it in the enclosure, and it's working great. Um, pretty happy with this, and I think it really is the synchronization solution I've been looking for. So, um, yeah, the way I have that set up is I created a service, uh, an RTP MIDI service um, on the Pi Sound that whenever it's on, it is looking for the uh, target uh, RTP server, which is Darlene, it's called, on my network. Um, so if Dar as long as Darlene is there, um, it will produce, it will synchronize up to whatever MIDI clock is out, output. It's not synchronizing. It'll, it'll connect to whatever, it will connect to Darlene and then any MIDI data that's going to Darlene will then just go out those, that output. What does this look like in a computer? So for me, I'm running Windows, and that's where I was running machine from before. In that Windows operating system, I, I'm running RTP MIDI uh, software that is producing a session, RTP MIDI session. And then on the Raspberry Pi, I am running RTP MIDI software and connecting to that session. And you can see that right here. So. The way we get set up with the RTP MIDI software on our on a computer is by installing that from. I would recommend Tobias Erickson, uh, Tobias minus Erickson .de, and grab the RTP MIDI software for Windows. If you are running a Mac or any iOS, you should have RTP MIDI set up in that core MIDI framework, and it should look. I believe it looks something very similar to this. So if you follow the step-by-step -step tutorial on Tobias Erickson's setup, that should get you set up to right about here. If you don't, all you need to do is start this, um, add local name, add bajor name, uh, add port number, and enable it. I would keep with defaults, like just your regular host name and port 4000, sorry, port 5004. And then once you have that enabled, I believe it comes up here as a session. You might not. If it doesn't, just hit plus. And then we would want to connect up our participant. Our participant here is Patchbox, which is the host name for the Raspberry Pi that, I, that I'm running on my system. First and foremost, if you're running any Raspberry Pi, I would suggest going to blogus.io and grabbing their Patchbox OS. Um, downloading it and setting it up, following their instructions, you will be ready to run RTP MIDI. Now, the only thing that you might have that might be different is if you don't have the Pi sound, you're going to need to get another bit of information, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so the other bit of software that you're going to need is uh, RTP software, RTP MIDI software for Raspberry Pi. McLaren Labs uh, makes excellent software. I've had some questions. They've been very quick to answer. So I'd highly recommend using purchasing this for $5. And uh, yeah, I think you'll, you're good to go, especially their instructions are really easy to set up. And it's not only a GUI application, but it's a command line application. Since it's a command line application as well, we're able to do something like set up a service that is running all the time, um, whenever it starts. Uh, so it's g kind of why I like this a lot. So what, what does that look like? So on the thing that we need to get is we need to check what our current MIDI devices, our current ALSA MIDI devices are. And you'll see uh, my client 20 is PySound, um, which is the you know PySound hat that we're looking at. So 
if you have a different device here, you just need to take note of what client number that is. And the other thing is you will need to create a service and that service is going to run a command line, um, just a, 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 a command on the command line. And what that looks like is for me, it's running RTP, let's make sure this is good, RTP MIDI and call Darlene, which was the host name of, or the um, bonjour name and at port 5004 with to my local PySound uh, Alsa MIDI client. And then I'm also just logging it to journal CTL. What that looks like is we can see, remember all that stuff about clock and how that looks and what that looks like. You can, if I just control C here, this is the time alignment for the clock pulses that are coming out. Um, it's also part of the information that's coming out should be, I'm not seeing it, there we go, um, is the current latency, which is less than a millisecond. It's a quarter of a millisecond. So if we look at, and we'll, we can see that latency produced here. So we're really at hardware level latency and I believe to be hardware level jitter, jitter amounts, which is excellent. And the way that I did that is I, oh, come on, <laughs> is I wound up um, creating this, this service, the systemd service. And all, all it's doing is running that exec command um, right there. And it's just going to do it every time the system starts. So we can also look at that by just status uh, RTP MIDI call service shows the status so and you can see this is um, enabled and it is active so when it's enabled it means that on start it's going to start up and once active it means that it's currently running so yeah that's how I have it currently set up on my system so yeah that's pretty much where I'm at um, if you have any questions please ask below um, I would be happy to share whatever information I have. And if I have something wrong, like totally wrong, please, please let me know because that uh, just helps me understand this stuff better um, and hopefully will help every anyone else reading um, understand it better as well. I hope you have a great holiday and stay safe and let's make some music.